All right, guys, we are ready to rock and roll here. It is Tuesday night, and we are going to give you a couple of college football preview videos. Um, and then really tomorrow, Wednesday, that's when we're going to make a lot of picks and really discuss some of the biggest games in all of the country um, for all of uh, these games. So a lot of times we'll do topic videos, big topics, like who is Nebraska going to hire We'll talk about the playoff picture in college football. I think we can even talk, make a video on that as well. But again, try to do maybe at least one video a day, maybe two videos a day. So it's good here that we have our studio and we are up and we are kind of running here. And this game in Knoxville this week is one of the biggest Tennessee football games in the last 20 years. You have to go back to... Alabama, Tennessee in the year 2000 or 2001. You have to go back to like the Gator football game in like 99, 2000. I mean, Neyland Stadium, Tennessee 5-0. and Tennessee beats LSU at LSU 40-13. to This is a team that just won a national championship a couple of years ago. They have NFL talent on their roster, a really decent coach that's coming in there. And Josh Heupel in year two was able to go ahead and they thrashed LSU. And the thing is about Heupel, I thought, Heupel is not a dynamic personality. If we remember that coaching search, Tennessee... You know, Danny White, I thought that he just missed out on James Franklin. And maybe if you gave truth serum to Danny White, the AD, he would say this. He missed out on James Franklin, and then he ended up with Josh Heupel. Josh Heupel was a coordinator at Missouri. They'd run really fast offense, almost like Chip Kelly. And he was at UCF after Scott Frost. So Scott Frost executed at UCF, all right? And put it this way, Josh Heupel was a good offensive coordinator with Drew Locke at Missouri. Their offense was incredibly explosive throwing the football. So Dylan Gabriel and Drew Locke put up big numbers. But the defense was a mess at Central Florida, and they regressed since Scott Frost. They were one of the worst defenses in the Power Five. So you look at this guy, Josh Heupel, he doesn't have a dynamic personality. He's coming from the American Conference, and he's done an even worse job at Central Florida than Scott Frost did at Nebraska, and Scott Frost also failed miserably when he went to the Big Ten. So that just shows you sometimes the coaching search is a crapshoot. But what has Josh Heupel done better than I expected? First of all, this offense is ridiculous. It's probably, I would say, the best offense in college football. Maybe if we look statistically, that the metrics probably back that up. You have Hendon Hooker, who was a Virginia Tech transfer, who was battling and didn't even win the starting job over Joe Milton. He is mobile. He's 6'4". He's a guy that can make any throw on the field. He throws with touch. He's a great leader from Greensboro, North Carolina. He's a top five pick. He is a Heisman candidate if there ever was one. You have Jalen Hyatt, one of the best receivers in all of the country. Cedric Tillman might be coming back this week. All right? And Tennessee can really run the football as well. But Josh Heupel... You look at Tim Banks, the defensive coordinator. The offense is just so damn good that the defense just kind of has to hold up. And now the defense, with, with them stopping the run, I mean, the recruiting level of, of, of Heupel has been unbelievable. He gets Nico Yamaya, you know, he gets, you know, Chaz Nimrod. They have so much talent coming into Tennessee. They're all about speed. All right, they're all about getting guys with upside. You know, Caleb Herring's another guy from uh, Nashville that's a big-time recruit uh, on defense. But the point is about Heupel is he's recruiting unlike Scott Frost. The offense is just spectacular, spectacular offense, and it's up-tempo passing game. Scott Frost was more run the football. Josh Heupel is passing game. He always leaks the tight ends out, so it's always one-on-one where the defender has to, he puts the defense in so much conflict because of the scheme and because of how spread out it is. And it's spread out kind of like the air raid, but the thing is he'll run the football a lot. So it is more like Art Bryles, Kendall Bryles, and what Lane Kiffin tried to adapt to. Tempo, speed, 
run the football, wear out the defense, don't let them sub, then throw a quick a high percentage screen pass. These are all really high percentage plays, and they really work tremendously at the college level. Cliff Kingsbury's kind of trying to do it at the NFL level. I think Chip Kelly tried to. Maybe the defense is maybe just the players are so dang good at the NFL level. Um, and in college, you could just recruit superior talent. But this Tennessee, I, I was wrong about Heupel. I didn't think he was dynamic. I thought his defenses would be horrible. Uh, highlighted last year by, you know, kind of bad performances down the stretch uh, against Purdue and so on and so forth. Um, I thought that the guy, honestly, was was a failure at UCF, was, was all right at UCF, nine wins at UCF, wasn't a dynamic recruiter. I didn't think he was a dynamic recruiter, and I thought SEC teams would catch on to his offense. Now, here's the thing about Heupel, is that this is still very early in Heupel's reign here at Tennessee. Right now, he looks like Steve Spurrier, but he kind of has this one trick of tempo. Will this last? Is Hendon Hooker just an outstanding, amazing player? Will this last long term? Point is for Josh Heupel, no one knows the answer to that. He has surpassed expectations that that I and anybody had um, about Josh Heupel. So it's Heupel versus Nick Saban now in Tennessee at Neyland Stadium, the biggest game in about 20 years. And if Tennessee wins this game, it pretty much assures them most likely a spot in the playoff. Because if Tennessee loses to like Georgia and Georgia's undefeated, um, Georgia or Alabama, even if they played in the SEC championship game and Tennessee only has one loss, there's a good chance that if Tennessee wins this game, that they, they could still be in the college football playoff. Cause like maybe Alabama with two, maybe Alabama goes and beats Georgia. So then Georgia, ah, uh, Georgia would have the, oh, the head to head, you know, but, but the point is like Georgia can beat Alabama in the SEC championship game, Tennessee would still have this win. So Tennessee at 11 and one beating Kentucky, beating LSU on the road, beating Pittsburgh, who's a decent ACC team, their offense, Hendon Hooker, the eye test, everything. And also the statistics and the analytics of how great their offense is. Even if they go to Athens and don't win, I mean, they still have a great argument to be one of the top four and then you, you might have two SEC teams and then whoever wins the SEC championship and then again, Tennessee's going to get in and the loser might be kicked out with like two losses or something. So that could really happen for Tennessee. This is a playoff game for Josh Heupel in Tennessee. Hendon Hooker's that special of a player. If I had to be honest, even ranking like professional quarterback rankings in college draft, I see Hendon Hooker honestly. I see Hendon Hooker being like a top five draft pick. And you, and he, I think he can even have maybe even more longevity than Bryce Young. And that's why we're seeing these two guys in action. We're seeing Bryce Young. We are seeing an Alabama improved receiving core. Alabama with an emotional win over a physical team at Texas A&M. If Jalen Milrow is playing, Tennessee's going to probably win the game by 17 points, but it looks like Bryce Young's going to give it a go. And Bryce Young is special. On the road, he can make big plays. He can control tempo. When it gets in the fourth quarter, he's clutch at Auburn, at Texas. He is that great of a quarterback. He is, pro I mean, you have you have C.J. Stroud, who's unbelievable, but the clutchest player in all college football is Bryce Young. You still have Saban there. That pass rush will be interesting. So if Will Anderson and Turner, if Dallas Turner and Will Anderson, if they get to, um, to, to, to Hooker, that's the game right there. Is, is is can Tennessee protect against Will Anderson? Because that could really turn the game on its head, on its axis. Um, I really think with the juice that Tennessee has, with the way the offense is playing, with Alabama ha being challenged by Arkansas and both Texas A&M, I think that the 8.5 or the 7.5 points, I think you take Tennessee easily in that. And I think Tennessee can win this game outright. I think that their offense is just that good. No one has been able to stop this offense. Florida couldn't do it either. No one has slowed them down. Alabama's running game, I mean, I guess Jameer Gibbs has been great. But is Jameer Gibbs going to be a guy that's going to grind it out in the fourth quarter? Is Bill O'Brien going to be able to control tempo and play keep away from Tennessee? 
Because you got to win the trenches battle if you're going to beat a Heupel. If you're going to beat Josh Heupel, you know what you have to do? You have to win the trenches. You have to run the football very consistently. You have to play the clock. And then your defensive pass rush just has to make it a miserable day. You have to blow them out because Tennessee offense, it's like igniting a freaking match at a gas station. That thing will explode. Their offense is the most explodable, explosive offense because of how great Heupel is with tempo and and how creative he gets on the outside with scheme, like rolling the tight end, misdirection, like quarterbacks going right. I'm going to throw it left across the field. High percentage, wide open guys where it's it's literally one-on-one. And if you don't make the tackle, the guy's going to go for 60. So Josh Heupel's ahead of the game on, the, on an offensive level. An offensive genius, we could say, for, especially for this year. So, again, I didn't see it coming. I said at UCF, the guy isn't very good. This is like Brian Harson. Like, this isn't going to work. They wanted James Franklin. They get their they get their next choice. It's, it's, a, it's a decent offense, but the, it's a good offense at UCF, but SEC defenses are going to catch up to that up-tempo stuff. And, 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 and in the SEC, you're, you're going to need a balanced team. Well, the balance is coming. The defense is actually better at Tennessee. So now you look at UCF and you say, all right, Danny White was right. Josh Heupel can get, get, get guys that are elite. You, you give Josh Heupel on this offense, you give them Tennessee's resources to go recruit SEC, to go recruit Atlanta, to go recruit Georgia, the state of Tennessee, South Carolina. This is what you're seeing right now. And then they get Hendon Hooker from the transfer portal just, a, just an incredible move to get that quarterback. Because, of course, is Jeremy Pruitt going to develop a quarterback? You know, Butch Jones and Josh Dobbs are okay. You know, but again, this offense, it's, you know, it's not Jim. Jim Chaney's a decent offensive coordinator. He's, he's a very respected, good offensive coordinator. This is a different style of explosiveness that Tennessee's just never had. Um, I think Tennessee gets the Bryce. I think their defense steps it up. That atmosphere, the home field is going gonna, is gonna to be what carries Tennessee. And then Hendon Hooker in that passing game, you're going to be able to get to, to Alabama's guys. They have young secondary. And I think Tennessee carries this momentum. And I think that they, I think that they really play well and they coast. I, I think Tennessee too. Alabama on the road's been shaky. This environment's going to be insane. All right. And you get an environment like that. Tennessee is ready. This is their moment in the sun. It really is. So I'm taking Tennessee in this game. Um, If Alabama wins, it'll be unbelievable if they do. It'll be incredibly impressive. Um, I think Tennessee should even be favored in this game. It's just because it's Alabama. But Tennessee's offense is a better offense than Alabama's offense. And Tennessee stopping the run is, is, is still very, very good. And you get Neyland Stadium. You get you get all the Vol fans there. Um, I mean, if this game was played neutral, it's different. If it's played in Bryant Denny, it's different. Um, but it's just an amazing offense. And I think Tennessee, honestly, with the way that they're, they're clicking right now at Hendon Hooker, they're a contender to w- maybe even win this whole national championship. And I know Tennessee fans are going to get angry because I'm speaking out of turn or speaking too soon. But if they win against Alabama, then it's full on, you know, thinking about that, that kind of stuff. So I'll give a score prediction. Um, I'm going to take Tennessee 41, Alabama 31. Tennessee comfortably leading and wins the football game. The whole game, they take the game.